Good morning. Today on Spotlight, what's next for Midtown Detroit, Inc. and a changing of the guard for Westland, Michigan. Our guest, former state representative Maureen Stapleton, now the new interim director of Midtown, and former state representative Kevin Coleman, the new mayor of the ninth largest city in the Great Lakes state. What's the future of their respective communities? We'll ask them. It's Sunday, March the 24th. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight. Maureen Stapleton, good seeing you again. Uh, a quick question, where in the heck have you been? I have been in a place that Michigan loves to talk about, but they love to talk about us more, Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's okay. I was born and raised in the Buckeye State, so you won't quite get it from me, but uh, there is that serious, serious rivalry. What were you doing in Columbus? I actually was running an infant mortality initiative for the city, and it was a public-private partnership. Uh -huh. uh, but as I have been known to do, I am always drawn back to the love of my life, which is the city of Detroit. Uh, what drew you back? There is nothing that I can remember from even my earliest childhood that somehow isn't connected to Midtown Detroit. From walking Wayne State's campus to visiting the DIA, uh, it's been a part of my life. And it is really exciting because it's the first place-making effort uh, for the city of Detroit. Um, thanks to a lot of leadership from our anchor institutions and our cultural center and our retired executive director, Sue Mosey, we've been able to bring together a part of the city and brand it as a real destination where people want to live, work, and play. And so now this is an opportunity to transform and move it forward and decide what's next for Midtown Detroit. Uh, Midtown is 20,000 residents. That's equal to Ferndale hundreds of businesses, retail and otherwise. So we, uh, what, what drew, me, drew me back was the excitement of being and able to been, take it. And it's been changing, regentrification, new development, all sorts of other things going on in Midtown, uh, getting a, a new life, so to speak. I, you know, not as much as people think. I think there's some miscommunication about what Midtown is. The gentrification that people see isn't as real as folks think. We have a very diverse population of those who live, work, and play in Midtown, from the most affordable housing to the most expensive housing, to uh, young, from young people to old people, from black to white. The, the migration of African Americans and the migration of others hasn't really occurred in the way that people think it has. What has helped with Midtown is people are moving to Midtown, not necessarily as many moving away. Midtown has been responsible, for example, for a program called Stay Midtown, which allowed folks whose rents were high, uh, getting higher to stay in their units and we would subsidize and help them pay for it. Sure, that was a, they've been there through the, through the thick and thin of it. Right, so it's, it's an exciting time to really tell the world what Midtown Detroit Inc. actually does and who Midtown Detroit is. Sue Mosey retired recently. Mm -hmm. um, is this a smooth passing of the baton and you saying, okay, you did your thing, now I'm coming in, but I'm coming in maybe with a slightly different vision or the same vision? So this is an opportunity for us to take the 30 plus years of work by a dynamic leader in our city mm -hmm. and say, what's next? And that what's next will be decided by a broad base of stakeholders. We are ab about to embark on a 60-day planning effort, probably in the next 30 to 45 days, which will bring in all of our anchor institutions, our cultural institutions, our residents, those who visit, our businesses who have put their stake in the ground and are alive and well in Midtown. Bring us all together to talk about what are the next projects and the opportunities for Midtown Detroit. This has to be a stakeholder driven effort and so we are lucky at midtown to have anchors like henry ford health system that as we know recently got a huge development deal to transform another portion of what is midtown detroit we have wayne state university we have the college for uh, creative studies so we have a whole bunch of those anchor and cultural institutions like the dia and the library and the historical museum mm -hmm. um, but we also have residents and we have small business owners 
and we have pizzerias and we have bookstores. And so those people have to be engaged too. What is it that you need in order to keep the economic development moving in this part of the city? What is it that you need to help um, make place so that there are people visiting your restaurants and your bookstores and your retailers? How does this mix in with all that's going on downtown, which is getting a whole lot of attention right now, and in the next couple of weeks when that NFL draft comes in, it's gonna be all cameras focused on downtown Detroit. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Spotlight, talking to Maureen Stapleton, lifelong Detroiter. She's been in Columbus. She's now coming back to head up uh, Midtown Detroit. I'm curious, you've been in Columbus, uh, a city that has really grown. It annexed pretty much everything around it. it surpassed Cleveland. Uh, I'm not sure if it surpassed Cincinnati, but it surpassed Cincinnati. Okay, yes. so it's the biggest city in Ohio now, uh, and a whole lot of development. And I haven't been there in years, but people say you won't recognize it if nope. you go there. Sometimes it's good to be able to get out of a city you've grown up in to get another perspective. What did you see and maybe learn from Columbus, which is growing fast? that you say, we need to do in Detroit or? Cooperative economic development and inclusive economic development have been a part of Midtown since the beginning, but are something that need to continue to be a linchpin as we move forward. I saw stakeholders come together to drive economic development, drive housing, and drive critical assets to downtown to make it come alive to areas like Easton, which is a whole nother part of Columbus, to ensure that it could survive, to other areas like Short North, which is near Ohio State. We have done a decent job as a nonprofit leading economic and community development, and we need to double down on that like Columbus has to ensure that we have the national retailers coming in. Midtown recently in the last year received a, a restaurant called The Eagle. It's from Columbus, it's from Ohio. Hmm. And so we are now beginning to you attract. You didn't tell the University of Michigan folks that, did no, you? No, 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 okay. please, 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 please visit the Eagle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we need you. Right. Um, but, but, but that's the kind of development that has been spurred sure. by this organization. And that's what I saw when, when I got there. It's a cooperative effort. I also saw the funding community, community uh, do less cam cannibalization and more cooperation. And so I'm looking forward to establishing those same relationships here. We have had amazing support at Midtown from our funding community. Amazing, couldn't have done the work without them. Um, I would love to see that continue and help as we move into this next phase of what Midtown Detroit is. Maureen, is there a chance that so much emphasis has been put on downtown and some key neighborhood areas, you know, Avenue of the Fashion, um, that if we aren't careful, s s downtown could almost cannibalize mm. other areas close to it. So um, I would say no, okay. and I'm, I'm gonna tell you why. It's more about what happens in Midtown that will affect all of those others. Midtown Detroit, Inc. established the first place-making effort in the city of Detroit. But for Midtown and the success of the community and economic development that we have experienced over the last 30 years, mm -hmm. there would be no Corktown, there would be no Eastern Market, there would be no Live Six, there would be no new avenue of fashion. So goes Midtown, so goes all of their place-making efforts around the city. Downtown doesn't have enough housing to house people right now. We do. Again, Midtown has 20,000 residents. Downtown has less than half of that because the housing units are not yet there. And so we have to be interconnected. It's sure. about places like Midtown, which is seven neighborhoods that make up Midtown. So give me geographically, when you talk Midtown, mm -hmm. how far out are you talking? Because just a stone's throw from there would be the Motown Museum, mm -hmm. which is doing a 
mm -hmm. a lot of expansion mm -hmm. and getting a lot of attention for that. Would that still be considered Midtown or it, not quite? It, not quite. It's just a couple of blocks outside of Midtown. Midtown is north of the boulevard, mm -hmm. all the way, about, about a half mile north of the boulevard on the east side of Woodward. And then below the boulevard, it is six neighborhoods that take you all the way down to I-75 South. Okay. And so if you can imagine Lodge Expressway, I-75 Expressway, and then I-75 uh, South, that's kind of a U. That is, those are the kind of boundaries. And then on the north side we go, uh, excuse me, on, on the, uh, the west side we go a little bit north of the boulevard to capture New Center, Fisher Building and some of the residential uh, neighborhoods right beyond that. All right, so here's where you get on the hot seat a little bit. Should it stay like that? Or should there be some expansion down the line of those boundaries for any good or bad reason? Coming from someone who's been in a city where they did a whole lot of annexing and it seems to have paid off for Columbus, should we change some boundaries? City annexing should not happen here in, in, in the same way that you're talking about. North End is doing fine. Vanguard CDC is helping develop that area. Virginia Park is doing okay. We shouldn't have to go into Virginia Park, but we should be walking lockstep with the leadership of uh, Virginia Park. Eastern Market is booming. Uh, we should be working with the new leadership of Eastern Market. And so I don't think of Midtown as expanding its boundaries. Mm -hmm. What I do think is that so goes Midtown, so goes just those neighborhoods that I talked about. We are the center of the city and we can grow out together without taking each other's identity. Quick final question. The interim director, mm -hmm. is that something you requested or something that they, whoever they is requested? Is this a feeling out process or what? The board is clear and I was clear when we took this. We want to engage for this next several months the community to determine what Midtown Detroit should be. And we will do that together. Uh, and then we'll decide what's best for the next organization that, uh, or the, how the organization continues. But right now we're singularly focused in including our stakeholders, especially our anchor institutions that have paid for the success of Midtown to ensure that they're moving in the right direction. Maureen Stapleton, good seeing you, and uh, we'll get you back on Spotlight. Up next on Spotlight, Kevin Coleman, the new young mayor of Westland, Michigan. He'll be my guest right after this. The biggest difference from being in the Michigan legislature and being chief executive officer of a city, the population size of Westland. Yeah, it's the ninth largest city in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I would say the biggest difference really is uh, it's 24 seven being mayor. You know, your phone's gonna <laughs> ring. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It goes all day. Sometimes it goes all night, but you gotta be ready for uh, any kind of challenge and, and dive in and tackle it. What's Mayor Coleman's vision? What do you wanna do as mayor? Westland is centrally located between Detroit and Arbor Metro Airport. Uh, it's easy to get to off the freeway. Uh, so, you know, really I campaigned on two things, public safety and bringing more business investment into the city. We have Westland Mall in that shop and dine corridor right along Warren Road. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of vacant parcels, vacant space, vacant buildings. But when I drive by, I don't see uh, blight or vacant buildings. I see potential. And I think that's what my community sees. They know that uh, with the economy coming back up, Westland's really poised to turn around and grow. What type of development would you like to see come? You know, we're talking about mixed use development. So uh, you have condos, residential, but then maybe office, medical, retail on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, not super tall buildings like out here in Southfield, but you know, uh, three, four, five story buildings. Uh, creating some density around that Westland Mall corridor has really been the goal. Let's talk, Mayor, a little bit about the population of Westland. Um, who's living there? How diverse is it? Is it changing from what it was, or is it, it is the same old city as it was 50 years ago? It is changing. You know, when I moved to Westland as a kid back in the 90s, it was probably, uh, probably over 90% uh, Caucasian. 
mm -hmm. we're probably down to about 75 percent Caucasian now it's more of a minority uh, diverse community coming in either from Detroit Dearborn a lot of immigrants coming in from the Middle East from uh, Africa Mexico so you know we're a community for everybody we uh, have a ton of small businesses opening up that are uh, minority owned we actually did our first minority business uh, forum last week and minority business weekend where we highlighted small businesses owned by uh, minority members of our community it was really successful when you talk to these minority business owners what is it they say that they like about Westland and what is it, it what is it they're saying they would like to see come to Westland? That's a good question you know uh, Westland's affordable uh, the, the tax rate's not too high, the rents are too high. Uh, you can get in and start and grow a business, a small business from the ground up without too much overhead costs. And people are really warm and, and open to something new, you know. So if uh, we've never had a, uh, let's just say, a Iraqi restaurant before. Mm -hmm. if, if an Iraqi member of the community came in and opened an Iraqi restaurant, people want to try it. People want to check it out. We would uh, maybe have them come to City Hall and um, let everybody try the food and, and put that on our uh, city TV station and, and kind of show people uh, what, what they're offering and just give people a taste of something new. That's what people really want to see in Westland. Um, how will you, in terms of your leadership, be different than your predecessor? He was certainly a seasoned veteran. He was uh, in office uh, in Westland between council and mayor over 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was a good communicator, and he, he had big ideas. He built a new city hall, uh, redid Central City I was city just going to say, you got, a lot of people yeah. don't realize how beautiful that city hall is. There. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I think with the changing times and the changing culture uh, in, in Metro Detroit, that you have to have a new kind of mayor come in, somebody who's, uh, like I said, open to uh, really connecting members of the minority community with people who've lived in the city a long time. We have people who've lived in the city 50, 60 years who are my supporters and you know wanted to see me get elected and then we have people who have just moved in you got blended two together yeah you blend it all together and, and everybody everybody get on the same page and uh, let's have, have a seat at the table all right we need to take a little uh, break at the table we'll hurry right back with the mayor of Westland right after this Kevin Coleman, he's the mayor of Westland, one of my guests today on Spotlight. Um, talk about your relationship with your current city council. Um, is it a good relationship? We had an administration for so long under Bill Wild, new mayors coming in, there's some growing pains, right? People are saying, well, this is a new style, this is a new way of doing things. So right now the council's kind of uh, almost 50-50 on me and I think you know I'm gonna be meeting with council members individually as we go throughout the year I've already been doing that mm -hmm. but just to get to know them better see their vision because you all made news not terribly long ago with one member <clears throat> who wanted to be back on the council and yeah and you weighed in on that yep yep so um, coming off last year's election there was just some uh, a little bit of consternation about sh should somebody who was appointed lost an election be reappointed again uh, and that individual I actually want to see him run again and voted for him and uh, but there's a lot of people who are interested in becoming. Has the situation totally resolved itself yet? Or is uh, not quite there's still one vacancy um, and there's potentially another vacancy coming up one of our council members was um, uh, nominated to be our Democratic uh, nominee for State House to fill the seat that I vacated last November so it's just a lot of shakeup right now politically in our city. But, uh, you know, looking forward to working together. I'm somebody, like I said, uh, we want to make sure everybody has a seat at the table. And having been a former council member, I know the importance of working with You've council. You've been there, so you understand yeah, that and absolutely. have respect for their role in government. And there are separate branches of government. Right. And right. equal they, branches of government. It's an important role. Yeah. Long term, Mayor Coleman, uh, what do you see for Westland? Ten years from now, what do you want Westland to look like? Well, I'll tell you what, there's so many things that make Westland an attractive community, but my favorite thing about Westland is our parks. 
Uh, we have more parks than any other city in Wayne County outside of Detroit. Really? Yeah, really? Heinz Park and then uh, okay, yeah. uh, a dozen or so uh, main community parks and then smaller kind of pocket-sized parks. We're actually putting in a uh, new outdoor community gathering uh, performance venue uh, right, right, near that old, the, right near City Hall in Westland Mall on Nankin Boulevard right there. So there's gonna be a stage, uh, walking paths, a uh, big gathering area, a place for food trucks and uh, performers to come in. And that's really gonna be a kind of a town square. That's my vision for that area. Public safety has been a big focus of mine. Out of our four fire stations, we're actually gonna be rebuilding two of them in the next two years. Okay. Secured the funding for one of those uh, last year as a state rep, coming in as mayor to oversee the construction of that's pretty exciting. And then, uh, hiring 15 firefighters and four new police officers. So bolstering that public safety, people want to feel safe and they want to have options, recreation, dining, things to do. So um, family friendly community, friendly for seniors, uh, young professionals coming in and living here. Uh, just exciting times for our city. From Lansing, what is it you'd like from your former colleagues there? And have you have you been talking with them about things Lansing can do to help Westland? So you in know, the governor's I, office. Yeah, and, and you know, being a being a mayor, a brand new mayor, uh, police like I talked about, police and fire, and, and, and getting our public safety departments back in order. Mm -hmm. uh, we have recruitment issues really statewide. I, I've talked to other mayors. I've talked to Mayor Duggan in Detroit. I've talked to mayors of other cities. Getting more police and firefighters uh, to to go through the academies to train to get young people interested in that career. It's a great career. I'm 40 years old and sometimes I look back, maybe, maybe I should have got into law enforcement or something like that. We all look back. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and uh, it's just a great career and you're serving your community. But I wanna make sure that the state is supporting young people getting into that uh, public safety career. You feel so, good about where Michigan is right now, especially in terms of economics? I think we're poised to do well. You know, the governor just went over to Asia she was in uh, South Korea, Taiwan, uh, some other countries, bringing in more jobs, more investment. Uh, the economy's turning around in the Midwest. You know, I'm, I'm optimistic about right. Michigan, so. All right, yeah. and optimism is always good when you're in a position less yours. Mayor Coleman, thanks for coming in today's Spotlight. Good talking to you. We'll get you back. And that's a wrap for this week's program. I'm Chuck Stokes. We'll be back next week with more newsmakers in the Spotlight. We hope you have a great week.